Hey there, welcome back to the Lead Gen HQ podcast. I'm your host, Alex. Today, I wanna to talk to you about LinkedIn and lead generation and how that works. There are so many ways to generate leads on LinkedIn, whether you're B2B or B2C. And you know you could go directly through your own personal account, which definitely works better. People like doing business with people and not companies, right? So that connection, building that relationship is crucial. Or you could go through the company method, and that might include creating groups, belonging to groups, creating content within your own business page. And then you also, within that umbrella, have the ads. You can advertise on LinkedIn, as many of you know. So you can create lead ads, you can create uh, display ads, search ads, inbox, in-mail ads, lots of different ways you can create ads. One thing that I don't recommend, and I really want to spend a good part of this episode talking about the the don'ts. There's do's and don'ts for everything online, right? And for LinkedIn, the thing that you don't want to do, if you're new to it or you've been there and you've been doing this, hopefully you haven't, don't do this, which is a cold outreach with a message selling something. And so there's a lot of that going on, a bait and switch. Because of the AI that's out there right now, there's lots of uh, web apps that are created to integrate into your LinkedIn account. So it creates content and it creates messages and it just basically, you know, it's spray and pray. You you, you put out the, the, the messages, you put out the content and and you don't really build a relationship with anyone and you're just hoping that you have enough people bite so that you can sell them whatever it is you're selling them i hope you're not doing that right so i'm going to give you an example of a few different messages that i've received here today uh which is really irritating because i don't have time to manage my linkedin and i do have someone on my team a virtual assistant who does a lot of the vetting so if it's not a real opportunity i don't look at it if they're not connected with me already, typically my team can see through my string of messages, the direct messages where we've connected, have we done business, have we talked, so on and so forth. So most of the messages go nowhere and we just mark it as spam, right? And so that's that's not something you want to do. But all right, let's go to this one here. So this guy, he is a sales and strategy expert, okay? So this is how he opens the message. Alex F. So Alex F. I have my name, my middle initial there F because there's lots of other people named Oliveira. So he already addresses me the wrong way because I, I'm not addressed. No one addresses me that knows me as Alex F. So I already know that this is an automated message. My team would know that and it would go into spam, but I left it here just to give this as a use case example of what not to do. And by the way, there are so many companies doing cold emails and social media campaigns and cold call campaigns, calling businesses and calling companies like yours saying, hey, I have a, a better way of generating leads for you. So if you're in B2B, let, let me have access to your LinkedIn and we are gonna send messages and generate leads. Don't do it. I, I wouldn't, listen, and by the way, I have tried it over the years outsourcing my LinkedIn B2B cold outreach. It doesn't work, right? You 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 have to reach millions of people to get a handful, but you're going to piss off, you know, 90% of them, 900,000 of them. It's not worth it. Now, if you want to build a relationship, that's different. As I said, you can take that conversation off of LinkedIn, but how someone thinks that sending me 10 messages over the course of three years, because in this case of this man here, he started sending me messages I could see on February 12th, um, 2020. So here's the email. Alex F., it's great to connect. I always love connecting with other leaders and am amazed by the relationships I've cultivated from LinkedIn. What a wonderful platform. I agree with him so far. So if you're looking to scale quickly, it might be worth a chat. We help small to mid-sized companies build world-class 100% commission sales teams that almost always 2X plus inside sales teams. Do you have some time next week? Eh, I never responded. Long story short, he sent another message six months later, another message three months later. Now he's talking about our, me, me, me. Hey, Alex F., this is another message. Our company has personally consulted and advised 2000. You're, you're telling me these things and saying it's, uh, you know, that here's another claim. 
one of which will most likely have a team of 45 to 50, 100% sale um, commission salespeople by the end of the year. Again, talking about him, me, 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 his company, not what he can do for me, but just talking about his company. And, and this is a big mistake in B2B lead gen. You cannot spend time just talking about your company, your service, your products, your clients, what you've done that's so good. No one cares, okay? Build a relationship first. All right. So then there's a bunch of messages that go through here and I keep these up so that I can do case studies on them of what not to do from LinkedIn. If you're trying to build, if you're trying to generate leads on a regular basis. All right. Then I get another message today and this will be the time where I tell my team, you can get rid of this, uh, um, you know, particular message because I won't use it as an example again. So his message again is, Hey, Alex, Hope you're smashing it this week. Uh, who says that? You know, you know, I mean, I'm not your buddy. I'm not smashing anything this week. And so, um, and then he says, no, dropped a piece on scaling sales teams without losing the magic. By by piece, he says he basically, you know, dropped a new blog post or this link that he put in here. And he says, thought it might be right up your alley. Fancy a read? Question mark. No, I don't fancy it. Don't have time for it. Would be killer to hear your no holds barred feedback. I'm not gonna give you feedback because guess what? The way that he tried to approach me with these cold emails doesn't fancy me at all. I don't wanna do business with you. And the fact that obviously I've had to spend over the last you know several years, uh, even 10 minutes, which the length of the podcast here, even 10 minutes talking about this is enough for me to never do business with this person. So sorry, David, you're going to have to do it some other way. So don't do this. Um, also, don't waste your time responding to people who do this on LinkedIn or any other social media platform. There are better ways to generate business and it's not doing cold, cold, promotional, self-fulfilling, uh, you know, messages. That's not the way you do it. You understand? I mean, it's in like a telemarketer. It, does anybody ever, has anybody ever said that they like being sold to from a cold call? No. And they're, we're going to get that argument that cold calls work. Yeah, they kind of do work depending on the approach and depending on the salesperson and how well seasoned they are. But generally speaking, you're going to piss off more people you, than, than you are um, going to make people happy. So if I make a hundred cold calls, I get one account and I'm like, yay, I closed one account today, but I'm pissed off 99 people. It's the same concept with cold outreach. So when it comes to LinkedIn, look, it's people to people, human to human. So build that relationship, take your time. Or if you have a VA like I do, guess what? I'm going to go through those emails. I, I'm not too important to look through them with you, with the VA. We jump on a Zoom and I say, okay, I, yes, yes, no, no. Yes, pursue this one. Maybe it's a link building opportunity, a blog opportunity, a podcasting um, interview, whatever the opportunity is to do some channel partnerships. I'm happy to do that, but I, I'm not going to do this, you know, just cold outreach. I have another one, a financial advisor here. I hope you're doing well. This is just another message talking about their wealth management, yada, yada. Do you have 20 minutes for a brief call? And this was her first message to me. So imagine that the first message that I get is you telling me that you want me to give 15 to 20 minutes of my time for a brief call. And she even gets it down to the, to the date and the time. How dare you? I don't know you. I don't even know if you're a good advisor or if the company that you're advising, you're talking about people's financial wealth management. The fact that you think that cold outreach like that belongs anywhere it shows me that I, I should never do business with you. And, and, you know, the fact that you say, well, after looking at your profile, I thought this would make sense. My profile, even if you read through the whole thing, is not enough for you to tell me that you can help me with investment management. So, Again, real estate, and she goes on to talk about loans, trusts, real estate planning. I, I mean, this is crazy. If you're at a conference, this is not what you do. You don't meet people and immediately go right into it and then say, I work for this company and here's what I can do for you. And here's the date that we should talk. And that's not how it works. You build relationships, you build rapport. And for those of you that are not doing it that way, I don't feel bad when your conversion rates stink. And if you're paying people to do this for you, you should stop because it will ruin your brand. So take your time 
and be diligent about what you do on LinkedIn. Build relationships first. Once you build the relationships and you know their pain points, then you can present to them the solution or product that you are offering them. But you can't just throw it out there and hope for the best. That does not work. All right. So I hope that's helpful to you who is on LinkedIn currently or new to LinkedIn. This is, as I said, I've, I've been on LinkedIn since 2009. So that's 14 years. And in that time, I've seen a lot of different things on LinkedIn that don't work more than the things that do work. All right. So good luck with your lead generation. And we will see you on the next episode of the Lead Gen HQ podcast. <music>